Hello friends, we are somewhat employed by a fang company, so let's not stop lead coding till we get there. Today we are going to do rotate image lead code problem and this problem actually has very real practical applications as we know that there are a bunch of different softwares that allows the option to rotate an image. And if we see the list of companies where I want to join in and already have asked this problem, uh, there are companies like Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, Apple, Google, Bloomberg, Uber, TikTok, Nvidia, eBay, Paytm and Robinhood. So that's why I'm paying my utmost attention. I hope you also enjoy the video. This is a lead code medium problem and basically we are given an n cross n 2d matrix which represents an image. Now we need to rotate this image by 90 degrees clockwise. Also one more thing that is mentioned that we need to do it in in place. We do not need to use an additional 2d matrix to solve this problem. So the space complexity has to be constant in this case. Let's uh, try to see it with an example. So over here we are given a matrix like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and we can see that this particular row is actually converted to this column uh, which means that all the nodes have been transported to 90 degrees which means this one has gone to this place, this two has gone to this place and this three has actually gone to this place. And same goes for all the other elements that this four has actually gone to this place which we can see over here and this seven has actually, actually gone to this place which we can see over here. And the same way it is shown in this second example. Okay, suppose this is the input matrix we are given, which means that this is the answer for the 90 degrees rotated matrix. Now notice couple of interesting things in both of them. Well, over here the value 1, 2, 3 is in a row. So over here this value 1, 2, 3 is actually in a column. Same goes over here that this value 4, 5, 6 in, is in a row, but this 4, 5, 6 is in, in a column and same goes for the 7, 8, 9, 7, 8, 9. So this is a clearly a pattern over here. And basically what we can do it is that if we somehow convert this input to replace all the values that are inside the rows to be inside the columns and then reverse those entries. So reverse all the rows, we would actually get a 90 degree rotated array and let me quickly show you how we are going to do it. Okay. So suppose this is the original input. I have drawn it much bigger over here. And now what we are going to do is for every single row, we are going to place it inside the column and every single column we are going to place it in the row, which means that currently at the, if we consider this position, position number two, if we see the I and J th location, this is this two is actually located at the position zero one representing these two values. So what we are going to do is we are going to flip the values of the zero and one and same we are going to do this for this 4 which means that this 4 will come to this place and this 2 will come to this place. The thing they did for this 2 and 4 we are going to repeat for all the other characters and then we would have an array which would have where all the rows would have been converted to all the columns. Also there is a name for the process of converting all the rows to all the columns and that is actually called transposing a matrix. So first of all we are going to transpose this original given input matrix and we will see that the result would look something like this. So uh, this one will remain at the same position because this 0 0 is at the correct place so we don't we can't change anything. Now this 2 is going to be replaced by this 4 which means that over here we would have 2 and over here we would have 4. Again this 3 is going to replace by this 7. So over here we would have 7 and over here we would have 3. So if we just notice right now this row 1 2 3 has actually been converted to a column and this column 1 4 7 has actually been converted to a row. We are going to repeat the same process now. And now uh, this 5 will not have any impact because the position is actually 1 1 but for the 6 and 8 we will actually have to swap their values that now over here we would have the value number 8 and over here we would have value number 6 and this 9 will remain at the same position because the value is 2 2 which means we can't do much about it and now uh, basically now we have created all the rows and converted them to different columns. Now the next idea is that we are going to put this in the reverse order and if we reverse the rows for this transposed matrix we can clearly see that we would get a 90 degree rotated answer. Uh, let's do that. So over here the values would be 7, 4, 1 if we reverse this particular row. Same thing we will do for this one. So the answer is going to be 8, 5, 2 and again for this one the last row the answer is going to be 9, 6, 3. And if we see 
this is actually same as the answer we had achieved before and I just draw all these three different matrix to give you an example that how we are going to do the things but basically all of this activity can be done in place in the, inside the single matrix all we will have to do is we'll have to use a temporary variable to first of all swap the elements in this fashion and then once that is done we will need a temporary variable to replace the values uh, inside the given matrix and reverse the rows uh, if we see the time and space complexity for this approach basically for the time complexity we are actually we will have to iterate over all the elements inside the given node to create this transpose matrix and once the transpose matrix has been created we will have to reverse all the elements which means that the time complexity in this case is going to be big O of n cross n but we will have to repeat this process two times so which means we can say that big O of n cross n times two but in general we can just write it as big O of n cross n and this would be our solution in terms of space complexity as mentioned earlier we are not using any additional space which means we are doing it in a constant space uh, complexity and this is a very good solution any interviewer would be really impressed with your approach and this works for all the different n cross n matrix now let me quickly show you another solution for the same problem where we don't need to do like this transposing activity and we can actually solve this problem in a single go because So for the second approach, we are going to do things a little bit differently. First of all, I have drawn over here a bunch of different matrix of different n size. So n is equal to 1, 2, 3 and 4 I have shown you. And now we are going to see that if we rotate the 90 degrees, can we see some patterns over here? So suppose we have a matrix of the size number 1. If we rotate this 90 degrees, it makes no sense. It's The value is going to still remain same. So we are going to keep it as 1. Now for this n is equal to 2, if we rotate this matrix by 90 degrees, actually the thing is going to happen is that this one node is going to shift one value to the right this two node is also going to shift one one value to the right three uh, four and three all of them are going to shift one value to the right and the answer in this case is going to be okay so first of all we'll shift one over here one value to the right two and then four and then three so this is the 90 degrees rotated angle for this n is equal to two so basically what we have done is we have rotated all the values one place to the right okay for the outer layer and in this case since we only have four elements which means the layer is only one we are good so when when we get to this n is equal to three things becomes a little bit interesting and interesting how because we have the cells located on the outer layer and we have one cell that is located in the inner layer now when n is equal to one when the number of cell that is located inside the inner layer we know that the value is going to remain same so even if we 90 degree rotate this particular element it is still going to fall over here on the same place we are not going to do anything special with this one but for these other values we will going to apply the same logic we applied over here where over here where because n was 2 we had to rotate all the values one degree to the right or one place to the right in this case because n is equal to 3 we are going to rotate all the values to the two dig two elements to the right okay and this would be the answer so if we see in this case this one is going to come at this place this two is going to come at this place this three is going to come at this place and same thing is going to keep on repeating for all the other elements and that is how we are going to find uh, its solution so let me quickly draw the solution for this outer layer over here this is the answer for the outer layer of this matrix and because in the inner layer we only have one element and for uh, one element we don't have to do anything special the 5 is going to be at the same place and this is going to be the solution that we rotated all the elements couple of places to the right now in this case n is equal to 4 so obviously for the outer layer you can imagine that the pattern we are going to follow is going to be the same that we are going to rotate all the elements three steps to the right okay so that is clear but for this inner layer, we can actually see that this time we have a set of four values, where, which means we have a two cross two matrix inside. So over here, we are going to use the same logic we used over here, where we are going to rotate them one step on the right. So first, let's do it for the outer layer and then we will do it for the inner layer. So the rotation for this outer layer is completed now for this inner layer we will have to rotate them one times based on whatever we have seen when n was 2 so we are going to do the same thing this 
is the answer of 90 degree rotated angle which means one thing we can see over here is that we can have four pointers starting at this one four sixteen and thirteen and rotate all these values in place by using a temporary variable once that is done we can repeat the same process for this value number 2 8 uh, 15 and 9 and again we will keep on rotating them sequentially at the same time in place and then we would be able to fill out our outer layer once that is done we will come inwards and we will start filling the inner layer based on whatever the number of n we have and that is the approach we are going to take okay so suppose we have a 3 by 3 matrix and i'm going to show you what is the approach we, we are planning to take now this additional matrix i have drawn that is only for the understanding purpose actually we are going to do everything in just one single matrix but i am just going to show you that what are the value changes happening and how we are going to use this temporary variable to fix our problem so first of all we are going to st store the value of this one inside our temporary variables okay so the value inside the temporary variable is one now what we are going to do is first of all we are going to project this value number seven to this place one so this becomes seven and this becomes seven currently this is the scenario now we are going to project this value number nine over here which means that this seven is going to be replaced by value number nine and this is also nine at this uh, at the current moment again we are going to project this three to this nine which means that the value of this 9 is going to be replaced by 3 and this is going to remain 3 and now at the final moment we are going to take whatever the temporary variable we had and we are going to put it in this place which means that this value is going to be 1 so at a single iteration we have actually shifted values of all of these 4 places in its correct position again we are going to repeat the same procedure for this these 4 values which means that over here now the we are in the next iteration now the value of the temporary variable is 2 now because the value of the temporary variable is 2 first of all we are going to project this value number 4 to this place number 2 which means that currently both values are going to be 4 4 then we will project this value 8 to this 4 which means that this is already 8 and this value becomes 8 then we will project whatever value of 6 we had at this position number 8 which means that this value would become uh, 6 and this is already 6 and at the end we are going to take whatever the temporary variable we had we are going to project that value over here which means that this 6 is going to be replaced by this value number 2 and once that is done essentially in two iterations we have taken care of all the values that were placed out in the outer layer and we are done with this one now only thing we need to consider is this inner layer and because the for the inner layer n is equal to 1 which means that we can basically leave the value as it is and this is the answer and this is how we are going to able to rotate the the entire element in 90 degrees in just like very few iterations uh, we don't have to do like transpose matrix and then place the uh, replace all the values and change all the values so even if we see the time and space complexity in this case the time complexity is going to be big o of n uh, cross n but the we only have to do it single times and space complexity is going to be big o of 1 because we are only using an additional temporary variable to store some values apart from that we are not using anything special to store any values So we will initialize a variable called n and we are going to store the length of the matrix for this one. Once we have that we will have to iterate over this given matrix and we are going to create two for loops to iterate over this given matrix. Now remember we only have to iterate over half of the matrix we don't have to do much work which means that we are not going to iterate from int i is equal to 0 to i is equal to n. We are actually going to do it i is less than or equal to n plus 1 by 2. Now you will ask that why n plus 1 by 2 because in the condition where the given n is e odd number we will have to take care of that scenario as well. So first of all we are going to create a temporary variable and we are going to store value of one of the elements inside this temp variable and then we will start working on the flip operation for the remaining three elements. Once that is done we will start iterating over all the elements. And once this loop ends, basically we would have rotated our matrix 90 degrees angle for all the elements. Now the question comes that how did I get this value of uh, i and j 
actually i could sh explain it to you but i would expect that uh, you draw the uh, any 3 by 3 or 4 by 4 matrix on paper and try to see that how we are getting this these values of i and j because that would be a very good exercise for you anyways i would be posting this code in the solution so you can you would be able to check it out but still i would expect that if you do it by yourself you would not never be able to forget it now let's try to run this code okay seems like our code is working let's try to submit this code and tada, our solution is actually 100% faster than a lot of other solutions. And uh, basically, we are solving this problem pretty efficiently. Again, I would be posting this in the comments so you can check it out from there. And there, I would ask you to figure out that how we are getting these values of i and j compared to this value of n. And that would be a really good exercise for you to do at home.